All right. We got two doors. This is the staff dormitory. So I guess everybody's on staff. Who is like uh, Deep One's finest girl? What does she teach? Probably not a good idea to immediately start tracking, taking sick naps on my first day on the job. Second day, Nap City. As a janitor can confirm. I guess we're going to go through all of these. Uh, wow, we actually have a multiple door situation here. Swimming. Yes, of course she teaches swimming. Jesus Christ, why didn't I think of that? Uh, let's go with uh, tall and blonde here. Whoa! A fun trick of... <laughs> a fun trick of the black magic users of the old days was to write how-to spell books that simply by reading them would cast that curse that the reader was trying to learn onto the reader themselves. Fiendish, but funny, according to them. What happened to your eye holes? How to throw ethereal fire directly into somebody's eyes. Lucky it was just the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> It doesn't matter to me. All my classmates are seven are at seven a.m. All my classes are at seven a.m. I can read. I can read. <laughs> Got any ideas for a book that'll help me wake up in the morning? Ah, you'll want uh, international in, in, internasalized. God, man, fucking Christ Almighty! You'll want internalized zombification. In the necro necrology aisle, all the benefits of being a zombie without their drawbacks of looking like a corpse. Does that include hunger for human flesh? Though your intestines will occasionally fall out of your butthole. Harry Potter. Oh my god, it is Harry Potter. Huh. They must have a book for everything. Thought I'd take a coffee over scooping intestines. <laughs> Though I'd take coffee over scooping intestines back into my butthole. Maybe that's just me. Okay, we got big door. And eh, not so big door. I imagine this is a backtrack, right? I'm just going to do that see if there actually is a backtrack. Yeah, it's a backtrack. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Big door. Hey, Emily. Do you guys have any books on advanced witchcraft? I want to keep fresh while I'm here. Charlotte is ab obsessed with Charlotte Butt. Yeah. Yeah, she is. It's a good butt. Hulu. I'd like to take that as, of course we do, Charlotte. Have you seen the size of this goddamn library? We got books that ain't even been written yet. You. The Science of Rain Dancing by Professor Anna Un Undercarriage. Huh. Guess maybe I'll fit in here a little better than I thought. I've been doing science all the time. Much like electricity, the human body acts as a conductor of magical energies, intrinsic in the air of regions of high concentration. This effect is exacerbated with wet skin, leading many witch cults dancing naked in the rain in order to conjure spells effectively. Indeed, it seems paranormal encounters seem more frequent when it's raining, or in regions of worlds where rain is frequent. The witch cults of Seattle and Scotland are considered incredibly powerful and fearsome, though it's simply due to their geographical advantage. Would they be taken away from their home deluges, 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 rainy seasons? They would simply, they would be simply as effective as their new weather permits them to be. Huh. Sick burn. Hello, Wobby. What you reading? Nothing. Just some stuff about witches. You wouldn't get it. Nah, probably not. 
That stuff's too cool and magical for dumb... Ah. That stuff's too cool and magic for dumb old cannibals like Annie. Is no place for ugly old purple-blooded like poor old dumb ca- old cannibal Annie. Poor dumb old cam- cannibal Annie. Poor old cannibal. Give me your butt. <laughs> hey. Well, hey, come on. I didn't mean it like that. Hey, next time it rains, I could teach you a few tricks. How about it? Get your pet frog, give you a couple of extra eyes. What do you say? That sounds fun. But can I make a suggestion? Um, sure, I guess. Better than rain. Can we dance around in buffalo sauce? I think... <laughs> I think I want a little zing when I bite your mom. Annie is obsessed with Charlotte's butt. Charlotte just knows she's got a good butt. Damn it, Annie. Why don't you go bug someone else? Because you're the only one that it finds it funny. There's a difference between laughing at something because it's funny and laughing at something because it's ridiculous. Most folk run away when folks like me... <coughs> from folks like me... They seem to take threats of being devoured quite seriously. And there's nothing I'd like more than watching you run away, Charlotte. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Wait, no, that is Charlotte. And there's nothing more I'd there's nothing I'd like more than watching you run away, Charlotte. I got a I got a problem in your story. Got a wee problem in your story. That. It shouldn't... It's not right. Ah, oh, you beat me to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. That wasn't bad writing. That was just... Okay. Yeah, yeah. See you around, Annie. <clears throat> that was fascinating. So this is actually a character to click on. Obsessed. It's catching. Everybody... Everybody is obsessed with Charlotte's butt. Everybody. It's like a... Mental disease. Ah, it's my favorite cutie. Hey, Lizzie, what you got there? Grilled cheese. It's the best human invention. Everyone says so. Everyone? Like everyone in the university. Everyone in this dimension. The Migo, the Ithians, the Spartarspawn, Chthonians, when someone makes one for them. The homeworld elder things. Even Yagsasath likes it now and again. Really? Not like the internal combustion engine? Not penicillin? The telephone? Light bulbs? Eyeglasses? Great big trains? Microscopes? Blech. Nah, we don't need any of that. So, humanity, for all its achievements, all the love and loss and all the wars, all the technology and innovation, all the art, the culture, everything we've done. We're considered by the rest of the universe as those guys that make a mean grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. She is so cute. I don't know how to feel about that. These are the best. Okay, apparently the order doesn't matter, though. Ah, uh, uh, let's see. Was, uh, so, what's with the puppets? <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, we need to take a second. Just step back and enjoy this vision. Well, we first got it, because it'll eventually wear on us. But, <laughs> uh, this is the best use of tentacles. Like, can you imagine the puppet show that Cthulhu could hold on his mini tentacles? Like, it's, it's really kind of perfect. And I wonder why nobody else thought of this before. <laughs> so, Mimi Rusk, huh? Make some neat children's show. You can actually include freaking, uh, uh, what do you call those people in the background? 
those guys. Now boys and girls and things, yeah. We help her talk with unfamiliar people and unfamiliar subjects. One must be more familiar with us in order to become more familiar with her. Spent a little too long in the psychology department, huh? I've heard researching all of them dark psych psychiatrics can rub off on people. And you've spent a little too long in engineering not to know when someone's pulling your leg. Huh. So working instead and in certain buildings is a residual effect. I wonder what effect working in the occult science building has on witches. I hope I don't start talking at a chalk taking a chalk bar to my cover and dance rituals. No one wants to know the angle of rotation on one of my sick freeball and pirouettes. Pirouettes. <clears throat> sick freeball, dude. Hey, why do so many people have tentacles coming out of their back? Have you ever faced a bampho necrotic explosion head on? Um, no, I can't say that I have. Neither is anyone else. First rule of bampho necrotic explosions turn away from the bampho necrotic explosion. And I guess the first rule would be. Well, I guess the first rule would be. Don't cause a goddamn bamfo necrotic explosion. But people can't seem to help breaking that one. Um, you probably can't tell from the lack of extra limbs, but I have no idea what a bamfo whatever actually is. It's the process deliberately caving in an artificial portal through our dimension to stop extra dimensional enti entities from getting out or in. It's... A last resort, since usually there's a team of portal divers still inside, but hey, better than the end of the world, huh? I guess. Hey, maybe you guys should try transmutation circles. That's what us witches use when we need to summon creepy stuff, and none of my coven have any weirdo tentacles. All you need is chalk, a little blood, some candles, <coughs> and a Complete disregard for pants. Yes, yes, we've all been taught the witch method. But the scientific methods reduce the element of randomness, increase the size and duration of portals to allow for human entry, and best of all, you get to keep your clothes on. So science is magic plus underwear, huh? <laughs> Noted. All these chars need to do, all the characters need to do is BRB scrans from your collection. Oh, be their own BRB screens. I could see that. Like, I'm really digging the art style. Really, quite a bit. Uh, we have a big old door here. A small door here. And I don't think I've talked to these two. Studying at Miskatonic is a huge opportunity. There are so few monster hunters in my hometown. I think my job prospects in the future are pretty bright. Well, hey, at the very worst, I'm pretty sure this place could use more freaky ass teachers. Okay, I want to. I don't know if the big door is an option, but it seems to be, and that's the outside, and that's not so outside. I just realized I haven't been reading these occult science entrance. Students of the occult science are. Discouraged from interacting with other students of the Miskatomic alumni. As strange or upsetting as occult science seems to be, the subject is incredibly tame in comparison. Ask yourself why anyone would come to the Miskatonic University to study geography. Good point. And Eldritch Library. Books branded with school's insignia are, under no circumstances, uh, are, are to, under no, under no circumstances, leave the library. Branded books found outside the library will be shot on sight. And I think we've already done staff dormitories, so yes. Okay, I gotta know about the big door. Nothing out there for me. My jurisdiction's right here. Although patrolling the whole university would probably be good for good old leg muscles. Get all toughened up in case of sick monster attacks. Can't stand any lean steak myself. Much prefer press a pressed ham. 
Blech. Stop trying to make me laugh, Annie. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> Student corporeum. What's that thing on your head? What's that thing on your head? You're gonna be first. Students are encouraged to practice vivisections during recreational hours, using the locally bred horrors, nightmares, pets, or children available. Those resources are included in your tuition. Okay, what's on your head? Just a small word of advice to the biology department. You can't just stick a dog and a war veteran into a centrifuge and regurgitate the mush into a living being. And everyone say hello to the world's very first werewolf. What? Really? There's clearly a reason I'm not down there with you guys. Aside from, you know, the carnage it would cause. Meanwhile, um... Were they incompopulations into freshly sewn bodies? That could fit. Do you guys hear that? A goddamn werewolf. You guys want to check it out? We're not done here, Mike. We've got to. In we've got the incinerators going before we can knock off. Condor's right. First, we burn whatever nightmares the Comporium's working on. Then we can go gawk at whatever nightmare the biology department's working on. They've got their own burners, after all. I always thought you had to get bit by a werewolf to become a werewolf. Then again, why would any werewolf stop at one bite and not just eat whatever it's biting? Hey, I got a better one. If you can only be turned into a werewolf by being bitten by a werewolf, that means that that werewolf got turned into a werewolf by being bitten by a werewolf. And that werewolf got turned into a werewolf by being bitten by a werewolf. Where did it start? Like, the world's first werewolf, clearly. But, like, who bit him? Maybe that's why we don't have zombie plagues anymore. <laughs> Al Cruzrug. I don't know, but he seems to have a Hydra symbol on his jacket, so he's the enemy. The first werewolf bit itself. <laughs> That's beautiful. So what do you reckon? They're, what do you reckon they're doing down there? Poking and prodding, same as always. Eventually, they'll get bored and will be tasked to carting the, off the husk. He is happy. <laughs> <laughs> if you told tiny child Albert that in the future Karen corpses would be considered the easiest part of his day, I think he'd pitch a fit. I'd have thought that part between carrying the body into the comporium and carrying it away would be the easiest part. Though, I guess hanging out with all this spooky-ass hallway can be a little exhausting, too. Kitty! Yeah, I missed the kitty, unfortunately, and it's a three-eyed cat. I'm, in fact, I'm going to take another look just to see this guy. Yeah, I'm right. It's a three-eyed cat. Not quite Nick Nocturne, but not quite normal either. Like, not Maru. Okay. Big door. Little door. Big door. Little Big door. Whoa! Oh man, look at this sick, awesome thing! It's got a brain and uh, some kind of vertebrae that just goes on forever. That tough stuff is a colony of cuddleworms, complete with the bloody spinal cord of their human host. They like to lay their eggs in city water pipes. And once consumed, they attach to the spinal columns of their host, eventually controlling with their every move. Sort of like a zombie, except, you know, a lot more screaming and begging for death. We? Very interesting species. That's deceptively adorable name for the worst thing ever. 
I bet the boys in tenor, in I bet the boys a tenor that I could yank the spine out of this poor sod's mouth, turn the worms from a rock solid grip on their host's brain while they're plotting while they're piloting them. I just realized the person in the background is having a bad day. You can run, you can ruin your life punctually, punctuality, something you can ruin your life, punctuality. Fingers here is going to give him a prod. See if she can't get him to let go of the bugger's melon meat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, excuse me, I had a dark thought encouraging that I s slit my wrist, take off your trousers, and play with your bum. <laughs> what? What? what if, where did this go? Why did this go? <laughs> Probably better to use your spare blood, eh? Sylvie? Ah, uh, strong man helping out little lady sadistic madness. Cute. I'm, I'm in my element here. This is great. Student Ethereum. Ooh. Spider Lady. Spider Lady. Disco Lady. See, due to a recent unscheduled experiment by members of the <coughs> security team, and Ethereum, the Ethereum has become the talkative... become talkative and boisterous. As a result of our most boring students are required to spend their recreational time chatting with the Ethereum in an attempt to shut it up. Where's the Ethereum? Whoa, your eye is cool. It's where the students come to etheriate. Etherate. Spider boy. Oh, it's a spider boy. Okay. Essentially, you just need to keep to maintain your resources, spending them on village and stat upgrades, but village upgrades give passive benefits to both villagers, so you need to be careful that you're not going to help other teams with their and their village. See, that's where I went wrong. With my first game, after I constructed our breeding pit, the other villages gained enough population resources to speed their buildings and forge <laughs> and forging processes. What the shit are they talking about? <laughs> okay, I gotta see your eye. <laughs> ah, it's so unique about our planet is that all the plants and animals share a universal language or a sort of collective consciousness guiding things like migratory patterns, blooming seasons, what is predator and what is prey, things like that. I have no idea what that sounded like, but I, I hope... Oh, I am Groot. Thank you. Let me reread this. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I'm Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. Groot I am. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. Guess I better go apologize to my bagel. Cool eye. Oh man, I hope that ain't true. As witch cultist, a love, a love goddess, I should probably be spreading the love to everything, not just humans. I've eaten a whole lot of burgers. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Into the Ethereum we go. Hello again. How's it going? Can't complain. <laughs> so you're the one who taught the Ethereum to talk, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess. But I think they he knew already. Hi, I'm... Wait, wait, let me figure it out. Hmm... 
layer of grime over the extremities, so you're aware of the mutagenic atmosphere and have applied a home remedy so you're local to New the New England. <laughs> but no real accompanying stench other than uh, that of dead flowers, so you're often with other people. As I just realized there's some hugging going on here. I need an adult. I need an adult. Mild wobbling at the touch of indicative lack of ex exercise, but the very dirty boots means you're outside in the rain a lot. Hmm. Judging by the short black skirt and choker, you're an active worshiper of Shub Niggurath, the goddess of love and humanity. And combining the grime, wobbliness, smell, and outfit, you must therefore be a member of the Chesson Cook Witch Coven. Wow, exactly. Although, they were just observations, so what's with the cre creepy tentacles? As this is as close to a handshake as I can get. Oh, well. Enchante. So, what's your deal? I'm Jessica Morgan. I'm the rec record keeper for experiments performed by on the Necronomicon. Though I uh, was a detective before my arms got noodled. So how do you keep your records if you can't control your arms? With a handshake like that, how, how do you hold a pen? What do you mean? I have perfect control over my arms. Oh. Oh. Well, it's nice meeting you. See you later, Ethereum. Bye, Spooky. Oh, Spooky, I've got a bone with to pick with you when I'm done with your little game. I opened the last door. Don't know what's in store.